I like to do it. There's some milk, orange juice, cappuccino, coffee, donuts, egg, uh, bags, eggs, bacon. All that good stuff is over in the next room. Sweetheart, walk on over, grab yourself a plate, get yourself something to drink, and once you're done, I'll be right here waiting for you. This is a thankful Tuesday. Yes, it is. It is a terrific thankful Tuesday. I hope you're doing exceptionally well this morning. Yes, indeed. This is the day that the Lord has made and we want to rejoice and be glad in it. I know you love your spouse, your children, your parents, your neighbors, your co-workers, your friends at church, your friends at work. You love the CEO. You love the COO. You love all of those people and they are important and they do have power, but they don't have the power to make a Tuesday. Only God can do that. He's God all by himself. He does not need our help. So you can go ahead and take your hands off the wheel. Oh, yes, you can. Just take your hands off the wheel and let him have it. They laughed at your crucifixion. I want to know what are they going to do about your resurrection because you are going to get back up again. Oh, yes, you are. You are not going to stay in that spot always. I'm thankful this morning, grateful for the train that didn't derail, the boat that didn't sink, and the plane that did not crash. When you and I were asleep last night, dead to this world, we didn't know what was going on. God sent an angel. Oh, yes, he did. He said, wake her up this morning. She's on an assignment. I have something for her to do. So... You're not up this morning by accident. I want you to know that you really matter. You're up on purpose. You have an assignment today. Oh, yes, you do. I want to ask God to bless, honor, and favor you just like he did Jabez. I appreciate you being here this morning. We are live and in color. If this is your first time, please don't let it be your last time. <laughs> And if you happen to stop by later during the day, just type in replay in the comment bar and um, that'll let me know that you were here. Listen, I want to thank you for liking, sharing, and commenting. I do go back and read all of your comments throughout the day. Oh, yes, I do. Iron sharpens iron. I just want you to keep knocking, keep asking. Keep seeking. Yes, don't get tired. If you get any bad news today, any bad news whatsoever, I want you to click return to send. Send it back where it came from. We're not having that. We are not having that today. I want you to serve notice to everybody that you come in contact with that we serve an awesome God. Oh, yes, we do. And that is nobody like him. I want you to thank him this morning for the victories, both great and small. I don't care what they are. They're yours. They're yours. You dropped out of high school, wasn't able to finish, and now you've decided to go back and get your GED. That's a victory. Yeah, you stopped at your associates, and now you want to go back and get your bachelor's, your master's, your PhD. Honey, that's a victory. Yeah. Last year, you didn't have a car. The motor went out in it. This year, you're driving a car. It's used, but it's getting you from point A to point B. That's a victory. Yeah, you can put your hands on all your children. You peeped in on them this morning, and everybody was there. That's a victory. Yeah, that's a victory. You have children that live out of state, but they think enough to call you every day or every week or every morning. Honey, that's a, that's a victory. Yeah, that's a victory. Your grandchildren respond by saying, yes, ma'am, and no, sir. That's a victory. A lot of children don't do that. They're not taught that kind of respect, but you hear it. And it's like music to your ears. That is a victory, honey. And it's yours. And we have got to start celebrating. Yes, indeed. We've got to start celebrating. I want to ask God to do what I always ask him to do on every call. To help somebody, heal somebody, deliver somebody, restore somebody, change somebody's mind, turn somebody's life around, reposition somebody, give somebody another chance. Sometimes that's all we need. That's all we need is somebody to give us another chance. Have you ever needed another chance? Yeah. Somebody on this call may be on the verge of a nervous breakdown. And if that's you, instead of a breakdown, I want to ask God to give you a breakthrough this morning. I want to ask him to come through for you. I know he'll do it. I know he'll do it. He's still performing miracles. Oh, yes, he is. I'm a miracle. You're a miracle. I just want to ask him to perform another miracle for you today. Whatever it is you need, I believe that God has got it. I believe that God has got it. Listen, I want you to keep on pressing. There's a blessing in pressing. I know life gets difficult. It gets dark sometimes. There are some valley moments. But I'm telling you, if you can make it through the valley, if you can just make it through that valley, you'll come up on the mountaintop. 
Yeah, you'll come up on the mountaintop. God has not forgotten about you. And he always takes care of his children. Y'all are chiming in. I'm so glad you're here this morning. Let me tell you something. It's been a wonderful weekend for me. A blessed day on yesterday. And uh, I wasn't here yesterday. I was out all day from morning to night with one of my friends feeding uh, the homeless and people who were in need. We had, she called me out of the clear blue and asked me would I go with her. I said, of course. We had such a wonderful time. I met so many people out there who have just fallen on hard times, but they were intelligent, articulate, polished, refined, and just needed some help. So I'm asking you today to pray for those who have somehow lost their way. For whatever reason, they can't go back home. They won't be accepted back home. Uh, for whatever reason, that God will change their family's mind about them. I met some beautiful people yesterday. Rebecca Wood says, good morning, beautiful family. Thankful Tuesday. Sherry Umana says, morning. Aretha Cleveland says, good morning. Ida Armstrong says, yay, we made it to our 25th wedding anniversary. Hallelujah, Ida. You know, Ida, I've never been married, but I can imagine how that must feel. 25 years. Honey, I cannot wait. Until I have my 25th wedding anniversary. It's going to be on and popping. <laughs> Elaine Powell Snell says, good morning, uh, sister. Thank you for new mercies. Ida, congratulations to you and congratulations to Harold on 25 years. That is beautiful. I can't wait to see what the next 25 years are going to bring. Marilyn Wardlaw says, uh, good morning. Elder Marguerite Coleman says, you're looking fabulous with this hair color, queen. <laughs> Thank you, Elder Marguerite Coleman. Aretha Franklin, uh, Aretha Cleveland says, uh, Joey Raspberry, you are glowing again this morning. Thank you for uh, God choosing you to bless us with our morning manner. Thank you, Aretha. And thank you for the things that you've been sending me. I've been listening and oh, how beautiful. Marjorie uh, Malone says, good morning, sisters. Carla Williams Douglas says, good morning, my sisters. Marilyn Wartlaw says, you look marvelous. Thank you, uh, my dear. And I'm certain you do too. Elaine Powell's uh, Snell says, love your hair. Thank you so much. Penny Rouse says, good morning, sisters. Uh, Missy Brown says, good morning. Ida says, yes. He woke us up and we're on an assignment. Love someone, inspire and encourage someone, and you too will be encouraged and, and blessed. I believe that. Bernadette Wiggins says, uh, <clears throat> good morning, gorgeous sisters. Carolyn Walker says, good morning, all. Sylvia Brown says, good morning. Rebecca Woodard says, victory in Jesus. That is where the victory is found. Ida says, and we have the victory. We do. Giovanna says, I'm celebrating all victories, no matter how big or small. Yes, yes, yes. They're yours. Jennifer Catchin says, good morning, beautiful people. Pamela Hempstead says, amen. Elder Marguerite Coleman says, we have the victory. Ida says, and I trust that God has not forgotten about us. Um, Pool rug. Uh, Marjorie Malone says, good morning, sisters. Rebecca has, sending praying hands and hearts. Jennifer Catchin says, happy anniversary, Ida. Ida's laughing and rejoicing. Giovanna says, happy anniversary, sister Ida. Latanya Mays, uh, my beautiful friend, says, good morning. Linda's caregiving says, good morning. I'm so glad all of you are here. Have you ever had to quit something? <clears throat> I mean, just, just, just walk away from it. You just quit. You told yourself it's over, it's finished, I'm done, I'm through. <laughs> uh, perhaps you had to quit a job. It, it, it just was not right for you. The culture, the atmosphere, the people, the assignment, none of it was right. And instead of just making yourself miserable, you just, you just quit. You just walked away from it. Maybe there was a supervisor or a manager who was giving you a hard time. Or maybe you was just bored over and over again from taking one customer service call after another for eight hours. You said, I'm out of here. Maybe you left a group or an organization. You just you just quit. You, you were done. You had it. You outgrew it. It was no longer purposeful. It, it stripped you of your identity and indiv individualism was felt more important to you. I, I get it. Perhaps you had to walk away from a relationship, you know, you were just, just flat out tired of pretending. Everybody thought that you, you were married to Mr. Right. 
uh, but they didn't see you getting pushed into a refrigerator or slammed into a door or, or called out of your name or locked out of the house. Um, and and your, your little house on the prairie was really a nightmare on Elm Street behind closed doors. And you say, you know what? I'm out. I quit. And you didn't care how anybody else felt about it. You just knew that you had to go. You had experienced enough abuse, abandonment, and neglect. And you told yourself, I quit. I'm out. I'm not going back. I don't know if you've ever had to quit something. I know I have. And now that you've had a moment to reflect on um, something that you've had to quit, I want to encourage you this morning. I want you to quit worrying about what other people think. Yeah, I want you to quit worrying about what other people think. You cannot live a life in full capacity if you're always giving your power away. There's some things I want you to quit. Perhaps there are some things that you quit that you shouldn't have quit, but these are some things I want you to quit. Some of you are still chiming in. Let me go ahead and acknowledge you. Uh, Lisa Lane McClendon says, good morning, sisters. Tiffany Tonsil says, good morning. Tiffany Tonsil tells Ida, happy anniversary. Oh, Ida, we're rejoicing with you, honey. We should have cake, ice cream, all the fun stuff. Uh, Marjorie Malone says, love your hair. You're looking radiant. Thank you so much, Miss Marjorie. Ida Armstrong says, my Lord. Missy Brown says, I have. Missy, Missy has had to quit something. She understands what I'm talking about. I want you to quit worrying about what other people say. Yeah. I told you to first quit worrying about what other people think. Now I want you to quit worrying about what other people say. What they say is tied to the wounds bound up inside of them, not inside of you. Yeah. It has nothing to do with you. Thank you. Uh, Lily Michelle Hunter says, good morning, gorgeous. Good morning, my beautiful friend, Lily. I'm still praying for you, Lily. Lily lost her mother um, maybe a year or so ago, maybe long, I don't remember. But uh, I definitely made sure I was there for her. And then I believe you lost a brother uh, after that. But you are always in my thoughts and prayers. I'm always watching you too on Facebook. Everybody's saying they like my hair. Thank you. I'm going to tell you where I got this idea from. I called my beautician. And I, I'm, I'm just so starstruck. I had a picture of Queen Latifah. I said, can you do my hair that color? <laughs> She said, I think I can. So I'm always clipping pictures and showing her things. And, and she knows that Queen Latifah is one of my favorites. So, yeah, that's what we tried to do here. Um, quit going after people who've made it clear that they don't want to have anything to do with you. Did you hear me? I want you to quit going after people who've made it clear that they don't want to have anything to do with you. I want you to help them out and you go on your way. Go on, on about your business. We spend way too much time <laughs> going after people who've made it very clear that they don't want to have anything to do with us. I want you to quit comparing yourself to others. There was an old saying, and I believe it's still true, that comparison is the thief of joy. I want you to quit comparing yourself to others. You're worried about others, but honey, last night they went to Walmart and their debit card was declined too. You don't know what's going on in somebody else's house and they surely are not going to tell you everything. Yeah. You're worried about them finding out that your children are in trouble and their children are in trouble too. Yeah. You're worried about them finding out that your marriage is not perfect and their marriage is not perfect either. You're going to have to hook up with some people that have some like minds and stop comparing yourself to other people. I want you to quit acquiescing. Bringing all you have to the table. And if they can't handle what you bring to the table, they just can find another table. I want you to quit playing small. Quit playing like you don't have what it takes. 
Quit being so shy that where your brilliance does not come through. Listen, when you walk into that room, you're supposed to walk in there like you own it, like you're supposed to be there. Yeah. And if God allowed you to walk through that door, you do belong there. We forget that we're answering to him. We're not answering to them. Stop playing small. Quit feeling sorry for yourself. Ida, that is the loneliest party in the world. Ain't nobody there but you and the devil. Yeah. Quit feeling sorry for yourself. Life does not care. Let me tell you something. 50% of the people <laughs> is glad it's happening to you and not them. And the other 50% don't care. You got to stop feeling sorry for yourself. You got to get up. You got to get up from that spot and get back in the game. Quit allowing people to change your character. Let them do them. And you do you. Stay true to who you are. I can't tell you how many times I've been in situations and because people will assume that uh, you don't agree, you don't go along with, then uh, then you're, you're called out. No, you do whatever you want to do. I'm just not going to allow you to change my character. I don't care what you call it. I don't have to bow down. I don't have to bend. It is what it is. Um, Y'all are still chiming in. Ida says, wow, comparison is the thief of joy. It is. It is. Ida says, yes, the hair's on, baby. Carolyn says, yes, yes. Uh, I, I read Lily's already. Missy Brown says, yes, today I decided not to play small. Don't you play small, girl. Don't you play small. There's nothing small about you. You are a child of God. You are the head and not the tail, Missy. You're the first and not the last. You're the beginning and not the end. You are above and not beneath. You are the apple of God's eye. You are a royal priesthood, a chosen generation, a city that sits high on a hill that cannot be hid. There is nothing small about that, Missy. That's big. That's major. Giovanna says, we're answering to him, not them. Yes, indeed. Ida says, and they couldn't handle what happened to you. They would have died uh, in the midst of it. Absolutely. Marilyn says, stop playing small. The Holy Spirit gave you uh, the message. I want you to quit operating in fear. And instead, I want you to operate in faith. I want you to quit operating in fear. You don't have to be afraid. Yeah, God has got you. And he's going to take you from glory to glory. Instead, I want you to accentuate your faith. Fear will immobilize you and cause you to be a prisoner. Yeah, when God has set you free. The victory is yours. You don't have to walk in fear. You can walk in faith. Quit asking for permission to live out loud and start living on purpose. I wrote a post the other day. I think I said something to the effect that um, when life hands you colors, I mean, start painting. And when people try to get you to color inside the line, I want you to smear all outside the line. Because see, when we die, we're probably going to be buried in a box. So if you have to live, don't live in a box. I want you to live out loud. Yeah, live on purpose. Quit being afraid of your own anointing. Uh-oh, somebody needs to hear that. Quit being afraid of your own anointing. You know, sometimes, Sister Elder Marguerite, Ida, Giovanna, Missy, uh, Marilyn, sometimes, Lily, Car Carol, sometimes you know, you're not going to be, you're going to be invited to the family reunion, but when you get there, you're going to realize that you're almost like an outcast. You ain't wanted. But I want you to stay there. I want you to stay there around your family. Because it is your anointing that frightens them. Yeah, it, it ain't you. You and I by ourselves, we don't have the power. It is your anointing. They know that with you, when they say certain words or, or do certain things, they may go ahead and do it. But their conscience is going to convict them because the anointing is in the room. That's what that is. 
It doesn't have anything to do with them not liking you, honey. They don't have a heaven or a hell to put you in. They ain't paying light, water, gas, or phone bill. It's just your anointing that frightens them. Yeah. Quit getting in your own way. When God comes along and does a new thing, I need you to step back and let him do it. Let him do it. Yeah. God is still performing miracles. Who told you that he wasn't? Let him do it. Quit doubting what you deserve. Every good and perfect gift comes from him. When something good happens to you, yeah, I want you to say, I deserve it. Because every good and perfect gift comes from him. Furthermore, God does not delight in your lack. Where did you get that from? He does not delight in your scarcity. He does not delight in your not having. Quit giving those who manipulate and lie to you the benefit of the doubt. Yeah, quit giving people the benefit of the doubt. You know, people have a choice to tell you the truth, to be upfront. They have a choice. And if they fool anybody, let them fool themselves. Y'all know I was so tickled the other day. I was thinking about a dear friend of mine. We were kind of like in business together and um some some money was due me years ago and and uh they said uh well you'll receive it on Thursday. When Thursday came I never did get it, so I said, Well let me I waited till Friday. I said, Let me reach out on Friday. And oh my and they said my my banker is out ill. I thought, wow, that's strange. I've been, I've been had a bank account ever since I was like 16. And I didn't know one banker could stop uh, like a whole transaction. You have other bankers there and tellers. I thought that was so weird. So I waited like a week later and then the branch manager was out. It just kept, and finally I just said, you know what? people will say anything. They will do anything just to manipulate, you know? And then I finally stopped asking because I said, you know what? Whatever I thought I was going to get, it, it, this person ain't going to make good on this transaction and they're going to lie and they're going to manipulate and it is what it is. And I stopped asking because you know what I said? I'd rather them just fool themselves instead of trying to fool me. People are incredulous quit talking yourself out of what you know is right embrace your ability to discern right from wrong good from bad left from right up from down quit not knowing how to say no when you need to i know this is a hard one for a lot of us sometimes we think self-care is always saying yes to other people no sometimes you have to say no no, I won't be able to take you on the errand that you need to run. Maybe you can call another friend this time, or maybe you can call Uber. No, I don't have any money you want to borrow this time. I have my own bills I need to pay, my own obligations, my own responsibilities. Maybe you can go to an organization and get the help that you need. Sometimes you just got to say no, even to the people that you love. And you can't feel guilty about it. You just got to say no. People will ride you. As long as you paying, they'll hop in. As long as it's your car and your gas being burned, they'll hop in. As long as when you go out to eat, you're paying for it, they'll ride along. Yeah. But when you ask them to take care of some of the responsibility, all of a sudden people will scatter. <laughs> Yeah, people will say, and they have the nerve to talk about boundaries. No, you are the one need to be setting the boundaries. Quit only going to God when you are in trouble. Yeah, go to him every day, all the time, for everything. Yeah, he's a way maker, a miracle worker, a chief strategist. He's the light in the darkness. You go to him all the time for everything. And finally, quit not operating in grace. Quit not operating in grace. Some people don't get this because they never give it. Yeah. But it is an incredible way to live. I'm telling you, I spent all day yesterday, from morning to night, me and my friend out feeding the homeless. Her sister has an agency where they give out all this food and stuff. So we go pick it up and we just out there, just stopping, talking to people, feeding people. I met this young lady. I said, what is your name? 
She gave me her name. I said, you look like a kid that used to be in my group home. She says, no. She said, you know where you know me from? She recognized me right off. I said, where? She said, I worked at the Family Dollar. And she told me where. I said, my God, that is you. That is you. She was pushing a buggy. She had a lot of stuff in it. She was wearing a shirt that was way too small. Her clothes were very dirty. And, dirty. and you, of course, I wanted to ask, what happened? What happened? But before I could ask, I asked her, was she hungry? Was she thirsty? She allowed me to give her something. And she said, um, I said, I remember you so well. I say, and, and she spoke so well, so articulate, so polished. And she said the lady who worked with her was giving her a hard time, and thus she lost her job there. Her mother had died, and she couldn't go to any family. I just listened to her story, uh, and I thought to myself, I, I, when I got home, I said a prayer for all those managers and supervisors and people who are in charge of other people's lives. You know, whether the young lady was telling the truth or not, I think this is good medicine. Be careful how you treat people. You don't ever know what position you'll put them in, you know. And I know everybody wants good workers and those that know how to count the freight and take care of the customers. But I remember this young lady was very good at what she did. She had excellent customer service. So I had no reason not to believe her when she said she had a supervisor that was like a tyrant. And I just want to say when God gives you a position to be over other people's lives. Do that with grace. And do that with dignity. And I always tell yourself, that could be my daughter. That could be my son. You know, when you get them fired or you take away their job and, you know, they don't have a mother to lean on or a father to lean on as this young lady. So I just want to ask all you supervisors and managers and CEOs and COOs and, uh, you know, those with titles, you know, and, and, and what you do, the decisions that you make affect other people. we got to be careful, y'all. I mean, karma is a monster. Karma is a monster. You can be up today and down tomorrow. And now you can be up today and down today. Just be careful how you treat other people with your titles. Yeah, do that. Y'all, I got to get out of here. I'm behind time. Let me go ahead and uh, read your last comments and then I'm out of here. Um, let me go back. Rebecca says, uh, oh, Ida says he's still performing miracles. Rebecca says, I'm receiving a word from the Lord through you today, Joey Raspberry. Thank you. Um, Carolyn says, their fear doesn't overpower my faith. Marjorie says, that's good, Sister Joey. Tiffany says, the power of no. Yes. Dana Christie Brooks says, I'm late, but good morning, Sister Joey. And my beautiful sisters, Dana, you, if you're here, you're right on time. Carolyn Walker says, they sure will. Missy says, exactly. Rebecca says, self-care, set boundaries. Uh, Carolyn says, my God, that is who you are. Elder Marguerite Coleman says, amen. Dana Christie Brooks um, says, amen. Call on Jesus for any and everything. Marilyn says, Amen. Dana Christie Brooks says, Yes. Um, treat people the way you want to be treated. Exactly. Jennifer Catchin says, Treat people how you want to be treated. Missy Brown says, Yep. Tiffany Tonsil says, Truth. Marilyn Wardlaw says, Amen. Uh, Phyllis Rebecca Holt Davis my history teacher from Southwestern Christian College, beautiful woman of God, says thanks for that word. Elder Marguerite Coleman sends hugs. Elder Marguerite Coleman sends blessings. Listen, if God be for you, who can be against you? You have no weapon, no weapon formed against you shall prosper. Sometimes you're going to have to quit some things in life. But if you're going to quit anything, make sure that it's the right things. Just let it go. Get rid of it. Lighten the load. And when you do, you will soar. You will soar. If you've done everything you can to keep your marriage together, and it still, it still seems like things are not working, quit and turn it over to God. Yeah. Now give it to Him. 
I want you to quit worrying and give it to him. If you've done everything you can by your children, everything, you've sacrificed everything, and it seems like they still don't get it. They still take you for granted. I want you to quit. I want you to try to quit. Quit worrying about it and turn it over to God. God gave them to you. Now I want you to give them back to God. I want you to quit. I want you to quit worrying about that job. Quit stressing. It's going to cause high blood pressure. All sorts of stuff that's going to go wrong in your body and in your mind. I want you to quit. I want you to quit. You school teachers, I want you to quit. Yeah. I want you to try to relax and, and, and get some rest this summer. You've been under tremendous stress. Yeah. You've been under tremendous stress for the last year or two ever since COVID. I want you to quit. Turn that stress and worry over. I want you to give it to God today. Yeah. Quit worrying about your friends. Yeah. Your enemies and your foes. Turn them over to God too. That sickness, that doctor's report, that ailment, whatever it is that doesn't sound right for a moment, can you just quit and give it to him? Just give it to him. Yeah. You've done the best you could with what you had. Now you need somebody who's bigger than you are. Yeah. Who's bigger than you are. Who can take care of the problem when you can. Yeah. That, that loved one that has passed away. Yeah, their death has almost taken you out of here. You are grief stricken. For one moment, can you just quit and say, God, God, if you be for me, who can be against me? Help me to understand. Yeah, because the dead have so much to teach the living. Help me to understand what you're trying to do. Oh, there's a lesson in it. There's a lesson. Marilyn says, I needed this in uh, message today. Thank you. Lily says, amen. Latonya says, amen. Listen, you're on an assignment this morning. Deborah Cashew Valentine says, yes, Lord, I see you. Thank you for chiming in. I want to thank you for hopping on. If nobody has told you that they love you, yeah. If you had to quit something and you feel bad about it, you feel incomplete, you, you, you feel like you've messed up somewhere. If you've had to quit something, let me tell you something, sis, I love you. Yeah, I love you even when you've had to quit something. I love you and there ain't a thing you can do about it. Some stuff we've had, we will have to quit. We're not in your house. We don't know what goes on. We're not at your job. We don't know what goes on. We don't know how you're coping uh, with someone's death that you love when you're by yourself. If you have a son or a daughter that's incarcerated, that's lost their way, uh, hooked on drugs, strung out, homeless, we really don't know how you feel. We don't know how you feel unless it's happening to us. Some stuff you got to quit. You just got to quit worrying about it and you got to turn it over to God. We want you to quit worrying about it so you won't be laid out somewhere. We want God to give you a peace, a peace that passeth all understanding. Whatever it is, I want you to talk to God about it today. Tell him, God, I've, I've done the best I could. I've done the best I could with what you've given me. And some things I've had to walk away from. Some people I've had to walk away from. Some jobs I've had to walk away from. Lord, you know why I had to walk away. I can't even begin to tell it all. But you were there. I had to walk away for my own peace. For my own sanity. And God is saying, I hear you, sister. I hear you. And not only do I hear you, but I love you. Let me tell you this morning, you are not stuck. You are not stuck. You just decided to stop moving. And the reason I know you're not stuck is God knows how to get in there. He knows how to get in the trenches. He knows how to get down and dirty. Wherever you are, he knows how to come where you are and pull you out of it. You're not depressed this morning. I'm not going to claim that. You are not depressed. You're just uninspired. I pray this morning that you find inspiration. I'm going to close with this. That prodigal son went out there and he messed up. Yeah, he messed up. But that didn't stop his father from loving him. Maybe you've been out there. You've had to quit some things. A lot of people don't understand. You feel like you've messed up. That doesn't stop the father from loving you. I don't care what you've done. I don't care what you've done. I don't care how dirty you got. I don't care how many joints you smoked. I don't care how much alcohol you drank. I don't care if you're confused about who you are. I don't care. God said you can't get so messed up to where I won't come to where you are. 
Yeah, I know folks going to judge you and they going to talk about you, but they're not gone. I'm gone and I operate in grace. I will come where you are. I will wait on you until you can get yourself together. Yeah. I don't want you crying. I don't want you sad. I don't want you to despond it because you've had to quit. If you've had to quit something, then God knows why. Yeah. If you've had to quit something, God knows why. And so he's going to extend his grace. He's going to extend his mercy toward you. He did it for the woman at the well. Yeah, He did it for the woman at the well. They were going to crucify her. Those women were going to let her have it. Jesus said, uh-uh-uh. <laughs> Those men were getting ready. Uh, Jesus said, uh-uh-uh. Put your rocks up and go home. I got this one. I got this one. She's made some mistakes. She's had to quit some things. She's had to walk away from things. She's made several of the same mistakes over and over and over again. But I got her. My grace is big enough to cover everything. Listen, I got to get out of here, y'all. I got places to go, people to see things to do. I know you do too. I know you do too. I look forward to meeting you back here tomorrow on a wonderful Wisdom Wednesday. Have yourself a blessed Tuesday. And let me tell you something. Remember, you're on an assignment today. You're on an assignment today. You didn't wake up by accident. You are here on purpose. God is going to put somebody in your path that needs you. Encourage them. Encourage them. Tell them don't give up. Don't give up. Tie not and hold on. Don't give up. I look forward to seeing you tomorrow. Take care and God bless.